Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head up to Uppsala, just to the north of Stockholm. And this is a brewery who I've not visited for quite some time actually. So for this one we're going to do my second review from Brass Tax Brewing Company. And we're having another fruit beer today. So this one is called Pom Pom. It comes in at 4.8% and as the name suggests there's been pomegranates added to this one. But overall it's a golden ale and uh, it should be quite nice. The last beer that I had from these guys was a blueberry imperial stout which I really quite enjoyed. I have to admit that was a really really nice beer so it seems that these guys have got a bit of a knack for doing well when it comes to adding fruit to the beer so hopefully this is another one that kind of follows in the same light as the, the stout that I had before and uh, you know the, the it is, as I always say when it comes to reviewing a brewery you do want to try something from the lighter side of the spectrum and also something from the darker side so we tried the darker side before we will see how we get on with the lighter side for brass tacks as well. They're dark beers uh, or the dark beer that I had certainly seemed to be uh, really quite nice so looking forward to this one and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website linked to my other reviews that I've done from Brass Tax Brewing before no doubt I will add some more in the near future there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system System. So you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, prefecture, county, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes about Brass Tax Brewing then. So Brass Tax Brewing, as I've told you before, were founded back in 2014 by Eric and Anders Sandquist along with their friend Eric Eriksson. So they're based on a farm in Storveta which is a few miles outside of Uppsala and in the beginning they were brewing very small batches of only 350 litres of beer but they've since upgraded to a system which has around 12,000 litres of capacity per brew, which means they can produce around 60,000 litres of beer per year. But all the three of the founders uh, hail, they're originally from Sudaham, which is a little bit further north than Uppsala, and so the brewery has quite a strong presence there, and they've hosted their own beer festival in that town, which they plan to continue as well. It would be really cool, actually, to go up and, uh, and visit that at some point. The, the Stockholm area the area around uh, around Stockholm with Uppsala and stuff seems really nice and I have to admit I really did like Uppsala as a city so uh, hopefully I can get back up there at some point soon and uh, and visit again because I've really enjoyed it up there but yeah Brass Tax Brewing and Temple Breakers as well there seem to be some really really good beers coming out of, uh, of Uppsala itself at the moment so if you get the chance to go and visit you certainly uh, won't be disappointed when it comes to the beer selection but anyway that's all you really need to know about Brass Tax Brewing now as I said these guys have a little bit of a, a kind of knack if you like for adding fruit to beer the 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 uh, blueberry imperial stout that I had from these guys before was really nice so I'm hoping that this pom pom guy kind of follows in the same light but as I say check out the brewery website and stuff in the description below I'll put their Facebook page in there for you as well so you can check them out and keep up to date with all the things that are going on at the brewery so yeah I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork then before we open this guy up there you can see the brass tacks, typical brass tacks artwork on this one. All of the, the labels have this kind of frame around them, just different pictures depending on what beer it is of course. Um, it doesn't really tell you much about it on the side here other than it's 4.8%, uh, it's a Starkill. It just said on the, here on the side, there is a little bit in Swedish, so it says Pom Pom is a light blonde ale um, that, is, that is blended with granite, uh, granite apple, which I'm guessing is pomegranates, uh, and it's a nice session beer um, with, real, with is it real ale character or sessionable character, something like that. But yeah, should be really nice. Plain bottle cap on this one. So without further ado, let's get it out and we'll get on with the taste and then. Quite looking forward to this, I have to say. Oh, we're getting a little bit of a an escapage, but yeah. So, as you can see, and as you would expect from a, a blonde ale, golden ale, this guy's poured like a really quite bright, um, pale golden straw. But yeah, it looks pretty nice. There is a little touch of haze to that, but if, you, if I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see it is mainly quite transparent. There's a solid finger of a frothy, I would say, 
yeah, perfect white head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But overall, you know, it's really nice. It's one or two little tiny bits of sediment floating around there. But, you know, the beer's been in the fridge for two or three days, so you are going to get just a little bit of that coming out of the beer. But, yeah, it looks really nice. Pretty much what you'd expect from a gold nail. So let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on. Yeah. So with this one, straight away, as you'd expect from the name, pomegranates coming out of this one. There's a little bit of an almost kind of red fruity quality to the beer as well, like a little bit of a, a kind of candied red fruit. As I always say, you know, you get these little heart-shaped sweets in the Haribo Star Mix. It's got a little bit of that kind of character to it, which is quite interesting. But yeah, definitely a little bit of that in there. Some juicy kind of... Um, yeah, definitely a sort of juicy kind of red candied fruit. Maybe a little bit figgy or something like that as well. But the pomegranate's definitely um, jumping out of this one. There's almost a little bit of a, a kind of black currant or something in there as well. There's a lot of red fruity character. Pomegranates isn't a fruit that I'm too familiar with. So maybe this whole mixture of things that's going on is actually just the pomegranate. And I would suspect it's that, to be honest. But it does smell really nice. The aroma that's coming off of this one, it actually reminds me quite a little bit of some of the, the Breakeria beers that I've had from Lance Krona. It has that kind of similar uh, aroma to it, actually. It doesn't, in fairness, you don't pick up the a little bit of that um, compared to the Breakeria beers. It does have the kind of fruity, juicy character. This, the aroma in this beer actually really reminds me of the Breakeria Purple Rain, although it doesn't have that sort of sharp, bretty kind of... Um, uh, that sort of sharp, citricky tart character coming out of it. But yeah, it does smell really quite nice and, and juicy, this beer. Underneath, you can get a little bit of a, a sort of bready note to it. There is a little bit of that malty quality coming out. Maybe a little bit of biscuit. There's some sort of grassy hop in there as well, which is quite nice. But mainly, it's leaning towards the kind of fruity, juicy side of things, which is, in fairness, what you would expect to this beer. So as I always say, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of it before you get stuck in. But let's have a go at this beer now. It's really juicy and really inviting, so I just want to get on with this one. So this is the Pom Pom, a pomegranate uh, golden ale, blonde ale, however you want to describe it, at 4.8% from Brass Tax Brewing Company in Uppsala to the north of Stockholm in Sweden. Let's get stuck in. Slanger, skirl. Yeah, I mean, with this beer, first impression is, you know, it's just, it's very straight up. It's just meant to be a nice, easy drinker. And, um, you know, it suits that. It's not one of these beers that's, you know, kind of going to blow your head off in terms of what it's trying to achieve. It's not one of these beers that's just really kind of ridiculously complex. I think it's just meant to be an easy going sessionable beer and they've pulled it off and I've had one sip of it but I can tell you already they've pulled off uh, pulled it off really quite well yeah I mean it's just really nice and easy going I mean it's not overly complex it's just is very very straight up but you can tell that it's well done, and to be honest, from a blonde ale, golden ale, there's not much more you can ask of that style. You just want it to be well done and to have a nice balance of the flavour, and on a few sips, I can tell you, they've achieved that. No two, two, uh, no two doubts about it. So yeah, with the malt base in this one, you can feel there's that little bit of that white bready quality. That just blankets the middle of your tongue on top of that. I would, or as you go further through the flavour of the beer, actually, there is a little bit of a, a grainy quality just pushes its way out. The malt base does have a little touch of bitterness to it as you move further on. Some of those grainy qualities just push their way out. Down the middle line of the tongue, there's a little bit of a kind of biscuity sweetness to the beer, but mainly that malt base is kind of bready. I do suspect that it's probably pale malt that's uh, forming the backbone of this beer. There's maybe a little touch of wheat malt or something like that in there. Um, but it, there's a little bit of that biscuity quality in there, which does suit it. You want just a little touch of sweetness when it comes to like a gold nail, blonde ale, pale ale or whatever. You do want just a little bit of that slightly caramelly biscuity note coming out of the beer. And I mean... The hops do have a little bit of presence in this one as well. So, back corners of the palate 
tiny little bit of earthiness coming out of this one, but as you come further forward around the uh, the front sides of the tongue there, you can feel there's a little bit of a grassy floral character just pushing its way out, mainly floral actually, round the very front curve of the palate, it's a little bit lighter and grassy then just behind the front curve of the tongue, that's where you get that little oily bubble where some of these fruity notes come out. So I would say in this one, um, there's a little bit of a a sort of figgy flavour, but the thing that happens with these beers, when they add fruit to the beer, it always kind of it kind of takes away a little bit of the, the hoppy component in the beer, it takes away some, it kind of covers the sort of floral, grassy components of the beer, and you can definitely feel that in this one, around the very edge of your palate, the pomegranate flavours, that pomegranate juicy quality is sort of suppressing the, the floral, grassy notes from the beer, but it works really well and it does linger into the aftertaste, but just behind the front curve of the palate there are a few more kind of fruits coming out of this beer. I forget what hop it is that you can actually uh, add, is it Will You Met, I think? That you can add to beers and it gives you this kind of nice um, blackberry quality. There's a lot of, um, there, back in the day there was a lot of brewers adding that to the stouts and things and I do wonder just the way that some of these berryish flavours are coming out of this this beer, I do wonder if there's a little bit of, of will you met in this beer. I, I don't know, I might be completely off the mark with that but I do think there is, with the fruity quality that's coming out of this beer uh, behind the front curve of the palate, I think there's a little bit of a kind of um, almost black currenty note, and I do remember Will You Met giving you those nice kind of black currenty flavours. There is another one, I don't know if I want to say Summit or something like that, there is another one of the hops that is used in some of the darker beers and things like that that can give you um, these nice red fruity qualities, but I can't quite remember what it is. There is one from Australia as well. But the names have gone right out of my head, but for some reason, William Met is the name that's kind of jumping out to me at the moment. I love guessing the hops when you don't know. It's always a good game to play when you're doing these videos, but mainly the fruity character that's coming out of this one, as I say, if you go behind the front curve of your palate, I think there's a little bit of a candied red fruit in there. The Haribo Star Mix, uh, Heart Shaped Sweets, as I always say, there's a little bit of a black currenty note as well. Maybe some figs in there, but then you've got the juicy pomegranate flavours around the edge of your palate. But overall, you know, this is just a nice, easy going. A summer session beer and that's what you want from a gold nail it does it, it kind of ticks all the boxes for that and um, in terms of the mouthfeel then I would say light bodied carbonation does have a little bit of crispness to this one and um, overall the mouthfeel it's quite a wet mouthfeel this one it has a little touch of oily character but mainly a wet mouthfeel there's a little touch of bitterness from the hops in this one but as I say it's mainly the fruity juicy character that's kind of suppressing those malt base is mainly smooth but there's a little bit of sweetness in there and there's quite a bit of juicy fruity character to this one but that's what you'd expect you know going by the name when they've added pomegranate to the beer it is going to be a beer that leans towards the fruity side of things but again uh, brass tacks have done a nice job of that and i think they've kind of found their niche they're quite good at uh, finding that balance of flavor when it comes to adding fruit to the beer so i've tried something from the lighter end of the spectrum i've tried something from the darker end of the spectrum and i've been impressed with both of them i mean probably if i had to pick out the two i think the uh, the imperial stout is probably the, the better beer technically, but I mean they're, they're completely different styles, it's not really fair to compare them in that way, but the one that I was most impressed with out of the two I've tried probably was the Imperial Stout, but that takes nothing away from this, this is a good beer, it's just for a completely different purpose, so have a go at it for yourself and just see what you think. I actually think, and I hope that they do have a go at it, these guys I reckon could be pretty good at doing some sour beers at some point in the future so hopefully they have a go at that sometime because they've got the fruit thing down it would be cool to see them experiment a little bit with the sour beers and just see how they get on but yeah I think that's a good place to leave this review so the pom pom from uh, Brass Tacks really nice just easy going fruity session beer if you like your gold nails and you like some of the, the kind of fruity sours then I think this is a good uh, it's a good non-sour alternative I guess you could say but it's a really nice beer I'm glad I got to try it and I hope you guys enjoyed my take on this one. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next thing, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Brass Tax Brewing as well. Hopefully I can get back and review one of their beers in the not too distant future. But I've enjoyed this one. I enjoyed the Imperial Stout and they're a brewery that you definitely want to check out. So make sure you check out my social media. Follow these guys on Facebook. Try some of their beers and just see how you get on. But the Pom Pom from Brass Tax Brewing Company in Uppsala in Sweden. A really nice beer. Just an easy going summer session golden ale. Slange just now and I'll catch you guys very soon. Skull.